Hello and welcome to School Talks. I'm Nikita and today we're here with Jennifer at Cafe 702. Jennifer is an amazingly talented vocalist. She is an entrepreneur and she is a very integral part of the society that we have here. So welcome to School Talks, Jennifer. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. Okay, so before we get into this, I just want to say you have a beautiful cafe. Thank you. And the name of this cafe, 702, I'm really curious, why did you name it Cafe 702? Uh, it just made sense. So, uh, flat number is 702 and uh, the whole culture of hosting people and things like that started from there. So, when we wanted to start a cafe, it made sense that that be an extension of our home, which is why 702. That is so cool. That's That's very personal, I think. It is. And that brings me to my first question. What inspired you to like venture into this whole journey of starting your own business actually um in 2012 when i first came to vasai there was a dream culture workshop that happened and uh, it, a few friends of mine conducted that uh, workshop and they were just sort of like helping us realize what our dreams were and how we could put that into action and what do we do uh, after that and things like that and as a very silly thing i wrote down that i wanted to one day own a cafe Okay. And I I completely like, I wrote it down and I forgot about it and I didn't pay attention to it. But a couple of years down the line, I think in two, 2019, I was like, I want to do something like, you know, on the lines of a cafe and things like that. And I was talking to my husband and he also wanted to start a business. And we were like, why not just do the cafe? But... um and then lockdown came and things like that. And that didn't sort of like pan out. But uh, in 2021, when we started, the thought of it was first because it was a sort of like dream that I wanted uh, fulfilled. But okay. Like you just mentioned, like when you were thinking about this and then lockdown happened. So it's, I just, I'm just wondering what are, I'm sure you must have faced some obstacles like you said lockdown so Definitely. how how did you like overcome those did you not get discouraged because personally in my opinion I always found business to be this really big scary idea which is I don't know very it's a very hard task right so how did you do it like what gave you the courage um I actually don't know what gave me the courage but I have this the strong community backing me up um my mom, my my husband, um, all my family and friends and things like that, they just, um, they're like pillars of support, you know. And I think that's what, uh, that's what one needs when starting something like this. Because without them, it would be crazy to even think of this as possible. It is, it is. It, it, and it makes so much sense, like having a strong community to back you definitely. up. You are the owner of this business, right? You run this whole thing. And uh, does that affect your personal life? Because like, how do you, where do you draw the line between your work life and your personal life? Does it, is there, do you have to set like a strict boundary? Or how do you manage that? I don't think there is um, a boundary or anything of hmm. that sort because um, who I am and what my ideas are like and what um, I am as a person, my my values and things like that, all of that is poured into um, this place. It's it's like a work of art for me. Like, you know, I've poured out everything that I love into this one place and uh, I'm hoping that it does well and, you know, because it's a part of me. And uh, so there is no boundary that happens. There is no work-life balance <laughs> as such, which should be there. But the thing is, it's such a joy to do it day in and day out that... Um, it doesn't really tire me. That's so nice because yeah. so basically what you're saying is your personal life and your work life are both so rewarding that like yes. you don't feel the need to differentiate. Definitely. I think that's like the best job to have a job that you love so much that you don't want to separate it. Yes. And that brings me to this next question. What is the most rewarding aspect 
of being an entrepreneur in this food industry so i don't know anything about the food industry so i'm really curious like what what is the most rewarding aspect like since you've started up till now so i always thought that the reward of opening this place would be that people would come and be like oh you have such great food and like you know um it's so tasty and things like that and your coffee is so good and i thought that would be the reward but the reward i think is seeing those customers come in day in and day out you know it's seeing the regulars it's seeing that over the course of 2 years you now have a community that you do life with like if i weren't seeing them um i wouldn't miss them terribly like because they they've become now a part of my life right and hearing stories like people who've come here on their first dates and then being proposed to here and then getting married and then they call us for our wedding and like you know we get to be a part of that incredible journey that they are on and um, who wouldn't want that 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 is rewarding i wouldn't do anything else uh, just to see something like this transpire that is amazing initially you spoke about how your family and you know your friends have been real pillars of strength and has that has your upbringing or your background how has that affected your entrepreneurial spirit because now i i have known you for some time and you have such a positive outlook on life and you always seem like such a joy to be around and i feel like that's a really important trait to have in this industry so do you think like your family or upbringing has had this effect on you that's why you've turned out the way you are i think definitely anything that we are is a sum of um our nurture and our nature and um the community around us and the same goes with me i've been brought up by wonderful parents and they've inculcated these values that now help with everything that we do at the cafe today and like um so much so that our culture our, our vibe all of that has so much to do with my upbringing has so much to do with how i deal with things like we don't yell and we don't shout and things like that and you know um that's quite different when compared to any restaurant business mm-hmm. and so that definitely pours into this business as well mm-hmm. so i think it definitely has had such a big impact um and that helps yeah i i mean it sounds like such a big part of you know running a successful business Definitely. and going back to you just mentioned you had like people come in here and propose to someone yeah. and people have gotten married and i just want to ask what is like this really heartwarming memory that you have of your customers that 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 has happened here like mm-hmm. in your cafe do you have any stories that you would like to share uh, i do actually so many um i think one uh, one thing i definitely want to mention today is okay. we have this little boy that comes in with his mom uh his name is Kyle okay and he is he has been coming here for i think a year and a half mm-hmm. he is so fond of my husband that every time he comes here he will ask where is simian i don't see him where is simian and it's such a joy you know to have like some random kid come in and be like where is like you know simian because he has a relationship with him and he comes and asks about him and then he'll ask about the donuts and why the donuts not here today and and then he he wants uh, to have some hot chocolate and when it's cold and things like that and those are just beautiful um, things to witness and i think i have so many other than that as well like when we completed the first year okay uh on our first year anniversary actually i was i was going through one of the the toughest uh, phases of entrepreneurial life because for the last year and a half i'd been working non stop and that just got me to a point of exhaustion mm-hmm. uh, mentally fatigued and things like that and which i think which is why you require from time to time a break and you know yeah. all of that but during that time we had just completed one year mm-hmm. and i just couldn't get myself to celebrate this cafe um and the year that it pulled through but um we just i think just gave some cookies away and something like that small and i didn't expect anything but there were so many people that came in that day with like gifts like just like i've never heard of something like this i've never heard 
of people gifting other people when they complete a year in the business and so that was just so overwhelming and i just went home and i cried just out of the sheer gratefulness of that you know so these That's, were your customers that just gave yes, this that is so sweet just customers that became that are now friends you know and um, it it was just so heartwarming it sounds really heartwarming because it actually goes to show that it's not just a business that you're running you're actually Definitely not getting in touch with real people real lives and that's that is an amazing thing you just mentioned your initially in your one and a half year it was a tough time i asked you before what were some obstacles you had to face oh, yes. before I, you started yeah. right but i'm sure you must have had a lot of difficulties to overcome once your business was up and running as Definitely. well if you don't mind sharing what were some difficulties that you faced once you already had your business running so i think one thing is having a dream okay the other thing is actualizing the dream mm -hmm. like having a dream is one thing and you think that just because you've had it you'll be able to get it done mm. but that's not it you know yeah. then the part comes of when you actually have to think it through and like work on it uh, day in and day out and you know bring that sort of like fruit to ripening or uh, you know till when it can be plucked yeah and getting to that is a tedious process not just that if you add to it that um, you're a woman that wants to run a business it it does get little tough because men just want to hear from um, men whether it's vendors and things like that so then um, i have to push my husband in the front uh, for such things you know for that to work and so it is difficult and which is why i understand why they say it's difficult for women entrepreneurs to do anything uh, in india especially mm. um so i there were like so many obstacles other than that as well not knowing a lot of things is one of the biggest obstacles Right. i think being in a place where you know very limited about certain things mm -hmm. is i mean it's not good i wish i knew more you know before i started i wish i knew um maybe i'd be better prepared if i knew a lot more i know a lot of people my age and even people younger than me who now want to get into you know the whole entrepreneurial area of life because growing up when i was in school we heard and we learned you're going to grow up you do your college whatever you take art science commerce whatever it is and you're going to join a corporate job a 9 to 5 or you're going to be a doctor or an engineer something like that never once did i hear growing up ki you could be a business woman that's an option for you it was never an option for me so when i even used to think about it like i said it was like a very scary and improbable thing for me but now i know a lot of people that want to get into it actually i always wanted to uh, have like this little bookstore cafe thing but it was something i thought of and then just let go of it because that's not going to happen that's what i thought but and you just said that you wish there were more things you knew when you were starting out because you didn't is there are there like some of those things that you like to share now to like young maybe students or young people my age who might want to get into it but they have no idea where to start or how to start you know is there anything you'd like to a few tips that you could share definitely i think there's a lot that can be learned from my journey that i wish i did differently and if i like if i could tell my young younger self to like you know do things a little differently i definitely would um one of the first things is um having a dream is not enough mm. get to know or sort of like build your knowledge on how that can be actualized right like if if you want to start a business figure out how you're going to bring that business to actuality and how you're going to get that business running and how you're going to make money off of that business mm -hmm. and things like that that is so important which is why i think education in not just business but also in your field is very important if you just have an mba that's probably not going to help you might have an mba but you need an mba and then you also need to know the field into which you're going to be starting a business like from like say food it's better to know um with that degree than to not have that knowledge at all okay um if people are starting out when they are young that would be my 
my advice to them like you know get to know a lot more when we were young we weren't really encouraged to get into business mm. and that's so true yeah. like even for me i come from a background of like most of my family being in the medical field and things like that mm. and i was never ever encouraged to go into business yeah. for my mom it was like a wild thought when i said i wanted to start a business um like she's like are you crazy like you know how is that going to work out we have no we have no one to even give us that sort of business advice or show us how to do it mm. or things like that and um, so of course it was very scary initially and um, that's not something that i ever thought of mm. i didn't know how i wanted to start a cafe or anything of like that i just knew i wanted it it was like this childhood dream that i had just sort of like transpired at the right time yeah. and that's how it worked out like you said this you just said it this was your childhood dream but i'm i'm assuming that you did you have like a career shift or something while getting into this because you said you like started this in 2019 so you must have been doing something else before that uh, was it was that hard to like just have a shift in careers like that because as far as i know we are told you know stick to a stable job don't don't make that shift it's too risky especially like students and young people are always encouraged to do that was it was it worth it i'm sure you must have thought it's a big risk How, what was that like so before this i taught vocals like you know i taught you yeah, you taught me yeah. and um i love that like i love teaching vocals and i i really did um want to make a whole career out of it and hmm. get into the music scene and things like that but i don't know what exactly pulled me towards this it was more uh, a point of connection with people that pulled me it was more having um the space that sort of like made space for people to come and feel welcome hmm that's what i wanted more than anything um i think as human beings we're just so drawn towards uh community and we're drawn towards people and we're drawn towards connection that that is so ingrained in me that one thing that i wanted more than anything was that i wanted a community a community that i could create and like nurture and give something of value like you know like for through every other um every other instinct that said no don't get into it right but it yeah. really looks like you've built a really beautiful community here and sure. uh i out of curiosity uh how different is it the workplace environment like when you work in an agency or a corporate setting it's very formal it's very impersonal and you have it's like you have your own little family like your business family that you have here uh, how did you manage to build that sort of um, rapport or that sort of trust because it's a very close knit group of people right how is that how did you get to that point i think building a rapport with them happens with time of course mm. and authenticity yeah. i think if you're not real with who you are with yourself with who who you are as a person it's going to reflect on your business mm. and it's going to reflect with them as well they're going to know when you're being fake and they're going to know when you're being genuine and the only real way to connect with people is to be yourself yeah. and i think that's what helps maybe also they do a lot i mean they do a lot like they also want to connect you know it yeah. doesn't just come from me or from my husband right. it it happens because they also want to connect and they also want to bridge that sort of like gap and um these are people we work with like day in and day out and yeah. why not create a space for them where they value of course where they are valued i mean so it sounds like a wonderful workplace environment to have i hope it is <laughs> yeah it sounds like it is and uh, getting more into a little bit of the technical side of running a business now especially for students i think students or like i said young people who might be interested into getting into this business uh i think marketing according to me i think marketing is a huge part of That's running true. a business uh, how do you or how did you figure out what your target audience was and uh, did you like have to cater your preferences or alter your preferences to meet that target audience how did you do that so when when we spoke about this and when we were figuring out target audiences for our cafe when we were first starting out 
my thought was i wanted to cater to me okay meaning not me but someone like me right like you know someone who would want to come i before anyone else i wanted a place <laughs> that i could come and sit and have coffee at that was that had an amazing ambiance that uh had great coffee and that i could just sit and read a book in or call my friends and hang out with there and have some food and have some coffee and like you know just have a ball of a time in that place i wanted that so which is why we went about creating it in a way that it catered to me you know as an audience mm -hmm. and um, so when it came to an audience i built it on jennifer like i made jennifer my target audience and i catered it towards a jennifer that she could come and have coffee and um read books if she wanted to and spend her time here and um feel like it's an escape from the hustle bustle of life mm. and uh, that's what that's how i went about creating it now when it comes to marketing i do not have a lot of expertise in it okay and this is something that i'm learning um even after 2 years of being in the business mm. and that's probably something i'm going to keep learning of course but marketing your strategies are going to change for when you start and when you're in the business mm. and when you're going and things like that that depends on what your end goal is yeah. and if there's one thing that i do wish i paid more attention to it is marketing honestly speaking yeah. it is somewhere that i lack and i wish i pay more attention to it mm. and that would help the business a lot better so do you handle the marketing area of this on your own or do you have like someone helping you with it basically the social media this that all of that is um handled by uh, my husband and me we for right now we've got someone on board and we do have that like from time to time we try and figure it out with some people and things like that but so far it's just been the both of us figuring it out right okay but yeah it is important to have a good marketing team for any product that you're selling i think that's something that makes or breaks a business besides marketing what are some other important aspects of running a business when you started out how did you manage to like advertise how did you get people in how did you spread the word like how do you do that cuz i don't know i find the whole idea of running a business really interesting and intriguing but i have no idea how you go about it so what is besides marketing what are some other important aspects so like you said when it came to us starting the business and advertising and all of that because i didn't know much about marketing i didn't do that okay i just started it and expected people to come in <laughs> right what helped me was that we built this place in a way that the door of this place was very intriguing to people hmm. so i would find random people while we're working inside and doing stuff just coming and just taking pictures of the door and going so they knew us as that place with that door okay. with that beautiful door so um when we were advertising about it i took a picture of the door and i said we are now open because that's what they recognized so i think what you do learn is while you may be trying to sell coffee mm. your product may actually be your ambiance that's something that i'm still learning and i'm still figuring out and i'm no one to, to talk to you about how things are supposed to be marketed but i'm telling you how we do it yeah. like you know while uh, i feel like we serve the best coffee in vasai mm. someone may be coming in for something completely different they may be coming for pasta mm. and that's that's their prerogative and that's their view of it that's my understanding of it so it's, so basically you're saying is the little things that just very unnecessarily created a brand recall for your place yes, like yes, the door is. like i i'm sure like you never door, expected like the chair it. yeah the chair yeah, that the was chair. sitting on yeah someone someone messaged me on instagram saying uh oh, oh you're that place with the infamous chair and i'm like what chair <laughs> and it took me a while to realize that like you know the the high backs uh, is what yeah um, that's that, also how i recognized your cafe in street yeah. it was the chair i mean it's yeah. the chair so but yeah that's, that's really that's cool. quite interesting yeah yeah and humbling I, at the same time it is i mean i feel like that's a good lesson for anybody that is looking to get into the business i feel like sometimes you're so focused on 
the bigger stuff yeah. like getting it up and running which is of course very important but then after that it's the little things that you do yes that matter and that's probably what is going to get you your audience your yeah. target audience but yeah like that being said mm-hmm. it is important to know like do market research like you know yeah. um figure out what does this place need like i felt like there was a need for a cafe okay. i felt like there was a need for a place that served great coffee and that provided great ambiance Hmm. and that was what i wanted to tackle when i started this business and that's also what i do serve like you know yeah. i serve you a place i serve you a uh, great coffee and i and i work day in and day out to serve you great coffee like i will go and find out what is the best coffee out there and how consistent are they and you know there are so many things that i take into factor to keep on with my brand so there are these things that have to be done while it's not just dreaming and it's it's more so the doing of the details like you know it's all these small small things that make this place what it is it's the small small things that make your brand what it is of course so i mean i think you've just made it very clear to me that i feel like for anyone who thinks that jumping into business is just like a one step thing that you decide you want to do business and you get into it it's not it takes a lot of preparation and you you're putting that in a really nice way because i feel like anyone who wants to do this now knows it's not an easy feat and you need a lot of preparation to get there but thinking of it as like from the point of view of maybe a high school student who's thinking of getting into this or or a ju- someone in junior college or something who's very young and i'm sure they have like no savings it's just something they want to do i think the parents become a huge part of Definitely. this entire idea So is there any advice you would like to give to parents specifically i'm going to make this a two part question firstly to the parents is there anything you'd like to say to them because like we spoke about uh business and entrepreneurship is not something that is encouraged as as far as i know in indian homes especially not for uh, girls young girls so what what is it how is it that we can you know put across to the parents that this is like a worthwhile venture w- what would you like say to a parent of say a 15 year old or a 16 year old so i think one thing that <clears throat> i do wish comes with some weight is that it is a lot of work mm. this is not easy it is it's the opposite of whatever easy is yeah. because it takes a lot of work day in and day out and even if you're tired it doesn't matter you still have to get up and show up for it because who is going to run this business if not you hmm. so and while i do have my husband to lean on not a lot of times is someone going to have someone to lean on like that you know you're going to have to do things by yourself and whether you like it or no there are certain things certain aspects of it that you are not going to like hmm. like i hate or i like i would detest firing someone but you like if someone is being inefficient and you know it's not working out for us i do have to tell them to look for other opportunities yeah so that is one part of my job that i absolutely do not like but have to do mm-hmm. but that is just that's how a business is it depends on you entirely initially at least and when it comes to telling parents i think it would be more be open minded be think don't don't just limit them to um aspects of earning just be, just because they have to make money mm-hmm. they have to make a life it's not more so about the money it's about them loving the life that they are living and wanting to do more i think when you're at a place of contentment and you're happy with the community and your job and things like that you're able to do a lot more and if you don't create that space for your kids it's going to be so difficult to see any sort of fruits from them yeah. and metaphorically speaking yeah of course but um it's very important for parents to be supportive it's very important for parents to know that there is more than just doctors and nurses and engineers and and um every other professional out there like you know yeah. we're not even considered in um, in 
those books, you know, when you see them, like, what do you want to become? Do you want to be this? And do you want to be that? Mm-hmm. And from such a young age, they're taught like, you know, okay, you can be an, you can be a pilot and all of that. And you can be an astronaut. But no one's talking about these smaller, like, okay, we are smaller jobs. But we're content jobs. Like, and you know. these are impactful jobs, I of think. Of course. They're touching lives. Definitely. For the second half of that question, and I think this would be my closing question. We, you just like gave some, I think, really solid advice to parents. And I hope that it makes sense to them. But uh, speaking to these students that uh, hopefully are watching this video, um, what would you say to them? Not just encouraging, but also practical advice to an aspiring entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur. Because, um, you know, I have, I have some friends of my own who very randomly started like these little, little businesses, like they'd uh, make jewelry and sell it, or they'd just uh, stitch clothes and like, you know, or start these little thrift shops, which sound very insignificant. And uh, none of their parents took them seriously. But some of them are now doing really well. Like they have uh, their social media accounts and stuff, things like that with 10K followers. And that is their audience. That is their brand. They've built an entire brand. So, but it took a lot of work getting there, right? And um, maybe, like you said, it's support from your parents. But for kids who might not have that, what is some advice that you could give them that, you know, you could do this as well? Like, maybe one day they could have a Cafe 702. Like, this could be them. What is something you'd like to say to these young minds? I think one thing that is, that I wish someone told me, actually, was if you want to start a cafe, work in a cafe. If you want to start uh, um, not just food business, if you want to start selling plastics, work in a factory that makes plastics. But like that's how you start. If you want to start a big business, you don't start at just starting the business. You start at figuring out how someone gets there. Right? So if you want to start a cafe, come work in the cafe. Figure out how it's done. See every little thing that there is to see. Figure out how people manage different, different areas and, you know, how it all compiles into one big um, product. And that's how you start. That's very important. And I wish people really understood that. Because if you wanted to start, say, a coffee business, you need to know where you get your beans from. You need to understand why coffee is such a big thing or if you feel like it's an overhyped drink or whatever it is figure out why it's an overhyped drink and you know if that's what you want to sell figure out where it comes from what it does and what are the benefits what are the um, negatives what how can you sell that how do you what are the things you don't say to sell it like you know all of those things but that comes with working for it initially when you're starting off always work like I wish I had worked in a cafe before I did uh, for I think two three days or so (laughs) but like um, I wish I had worked at a place longer to you know see some of these small things and see how it's tackled and all of that so I didn't have to go through those same things I would then come with a lot more experience and be able to handle those things with grace and you know uh, a lot better but yeah that is something I definitely wish people take. Yeah, and I think that's some really good advice. Thank you. And this has been a really nice conversation to have with you. It's Thank so you. nice talking to you. You're a lovely person to talk to. You too. And I love coffee, by the way. And I, this is a beautiful cafe that you're running. And I you think for... Have some coffee. Yeah, I will. <laughs> and I, I want to say for any young um, aspiring entrepreneurs or students or young people that might be interested into, you know, maybe getting into the food industry or any area of entrepreneurship, I think you should definitely visit this place. Come talk to Jennifer. I'm sure she would have some wonderful advice to give you. And yeah, that was it for today. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thank you so much. It's an honor being here.